everyone in this video we are going to see the format of a thesis or research paper based on mla handbook 9th edition here we are going to see the guidelines for formatting a research paper which have been widely adopted by instructors and educational institutions to standardize manuscript formatting making it easier for instructors to evaluate papers and thesis and for writers to focus on making decision about their research ideas and prose under this we have to concentrate on 11 matters they are margins text formatting title running head and page numbers internal headings and subheadings placement of the list of works cited tables and illustrations paper and printing proofreading and spell checkers binding a printed paper and electronic submission now let's see the first one that is margins leave margins of 1 inch at the top and bottom and 1 inch on both sides of the text the next one is text formatting always choose an easily readable typeface times new roman is preferable the type size should be between 11 and 13 points use the same typeface and type size throughout the paper do not justify the lines of the text at the right margin turn off the automatic hyphenation feature in your word processing program it is unnecessary to divide words at the ends of lines in a manuscript double space the entire research paper including quotations notes and the list of works cited indent the first line of a paragraph half an inch from the left margin indent block quotations half an inch leave one space after a period or other concluding punctuation marks the next one is title one inch from the top of the first page and flush with the left margin type your name your instructor's name the course name and number and the date on separate double spaced lines on a new double spaced line center the title do not italicize or underline the title put it in quotation marks or bold face or type it in all capital letters this picture shows us how to write a title in the first page of a research paper the top of the first page of a research paper should be like this do not use a period after your title or after any heading in the paper including work cited begin your text on a new double spaced line after the title indenting the first line of the paragraph half an inch from the left margin your research paper does not normally need a title page but if the paper is a group project create a title page and list all the authors on it look at this picture the title page of a paper written by several students should be like this the next one is running head and page numbers number all pages consecutively throughout the research paper in the upper right hand corner half an inch from the top and flush with the right margin type your surname followed by a space before the page number if a project has several authors and all author surnames do not fit in the running head include only the page number do not use the abbreviation p before the page number or add a period a hyphen or any other mark or symbol your word processing program will probably allow you to create a running head of this kind that appears automatically on every page this picture shows us how to write the page number and the running head of a research paper the next one is internal headings and subheadings headings and subheadings in the body of your research project can help organize and structure your writing but you should avoid overusing them they are generally not needed in short essay length works when using headings keep them short consistency in the styling of headings and subheadings is very important headings in the body of your research project should be styled in descending order of prominence 
After the first level, the other headings are subheadings, that is, they are subordinate. Font styling and size are used to signal prominence. Each level on heading should appear in the same style and size as should each level to heading and so on. Avoid using all capital letters for headings. In general, a bold face, larger font indicates prominence. A smaller font, italics or lack of bold can be used to signal subordination. This picture shows us how to write level 1, level 2, level 3 headings. In the body of the paper, headings should be flush with the left margin, not intended or centered. Include a line space above and below a heading. Generally, avoid using numbers and letters to designate headings. Capitalize the headings like the titles of works. Now let's see the placement of the list of works cited. The list of works cited appears at the end of the paper or thesis after any end notes. Center the heading works cited one inch from the top of the page. If the list contains only one entry, make the heading work cited. Double space between the heading and the first entry. Begin each entry flush with the left margin. If an entry runs more than one line, indent the subsequent line or lines half an inch from the left margin. This format is called hanging indent and you can set your word processing program to create it automatically. Double space the entire list. Look at this picture. The top of the first page of a work cited list should be like this. The next one is tables and illustrations. Place tables and illustrations as close as possible to the parts of the text to which they relate. A table is usually labeled table, given an Arabic numeral and titled. Type both the label and title flush left on separate lines above the table and capitalize them as titles. Do not use all capital letters. Place the source of the table and any notes in a caption immediately below the table. To avoid confusion between notes to the text and notes to the table, designate notes to the table with lowercase letters rather than with numerals. Double space throughout. Use dividing lines as needed. Look at this picture. A table in a research paper should be like this. Any type of illustrative visual material, for example, a photograph, map, line drawing, graph or chart, should be labeled figure, assigned an Arabic numeral and given a caption. Figure is usually abbreviated FIG, F-I-G. A label and caption ordinarily appear directly below the illustration and have the same one inch margins as the text of the paper. If the caption of a table or illustration provides complete information about the source and the source is not cited in the text, no entry is needed for the source in the works cited list. If you provide full bibliographic details in a caption, punctuate the caption like a works cited list entry, but do not invert the name of the author or artist that appears at the beginning of the caption. Look at this picture. It is an example of a figure in a research paper with full bibliographic details in the caption. If you do not provide full bibliographic details in a caption, use commas to separate elements in a caption and provide publication details in the works cited list. This picture is an example for this. The next one is paper and printing. Use only white 8 and off by 11 inch paper. Use a high quality printer. Some instructors prefer papers printed on a single side because such papers are easier to read. But others allow printing on both sides to conserve paper. The next one is proofreading and spell checkers. Proofread and correct your research paper carefully before submitting it. Spell checkers and usage checkers can be helpful but should be used with caution. 
they do not find all errors and they sometimes label correct material as erroneous. Next one is binding a printed paper. Pages of a printed research paper may get misplaced or lost if they are left unattached or merely folded down at a corner. So be sure to use a staple or paper clip. A plastic folder or a binder may also be used for binding but most instructors find that such devices make it harder to read and comment on students work. The last one is electronic submission. If you are asked to submit your paper electronically, follow your teacher's guidelines for formatting and mode of submission. Electronic submission may be done by email or on a website. Before submitting the paper, save the final copy of your paper in a computer or laptop or CD or pen drive. With this, the formatting of a research paper comes to an end. Till now, in this video, we have seen the format of a thesis or a research paper based on MLA Handbook 9 edition. Hope you would have understood very clearly. Thank you for listening.